morning. Great to see you again. And thank you for joining me on, a, on another Healing for the Nations. I'm Pastor Carl Lewis. And again, grateful to uh, have you tune in. Also, just want to acknowledge the people wherever you're hearing us from, because more and more we're finding out different people from different nations, uh, whether it's here in Canada, the United States, the United Kingdom, uh, London, England, or other parts of England, uh, Pakistan, India, Saudi Arabia, uh, wherever you're hearing this, the Caribbean, other parts, parts of Africa, really welcome you and, and uh, thank you for tuning in. Now, we've been on a series entitled The Woman Question. Uh, we're in part five of that. We might wrap it up today or, you know, somehow and move into something else next time. But um, this series came into my heart because of, I believe, some things God put in my heart and that I, we needed to address, uh, but also inspired by a book I read many years ago entitled The Woman Question, which was written by Reverend Kenneth E. Agin. That book is still available uh, on their website, uh, rhema, R-H-E-M-A dot org or Kenneth Agin Ministries, and uh, probably on Amazon also. And uh, in this series, one of the things we've addressed is why women have been treated inferior throughout the generations. And uh, at the heart of this treatment is the belief that women are inferior to men. And to correct this, you have to um, address the belief. And so that's why pivotal to this series, we've been looking at the creation of woman, the creation of humankind. And so let's just quickly review before I get to the heart of what we're going to talk about today. So ladies, we're going to look at no woman, know your worth. So if you're listening to this or watching this online or on your television, you've probably seen that title today, woman, know your worth. Or you can put the question, woman, what's your worth? You've got to know your worth. We're going to talk about some critical things uh, that you need to know in order to address that question or address that, uh, that statement I just made. So, woman, know your worth. And so, as we get into that, or just before we focus a bit more on that, um, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 28, and it reads... Then God said, so it's about to talk, so it's made before this now in Genesis 1, the, begin, the book of beginnings. He has addressed and really outlined the creation, we could say, of this planet or the, the creation of this solar system as we know it. The moon, the stars, this planet itself named Earth, um, the vegetation life. Animal, uh, we could say life in the skies around the planet, um, life on the earth, beasts of the field, creatures in the field, plant life, um, vegetation life, bug life, all these different things, things in the sea, all these things created. Then he comes to what we call is crowning creation. So he creates everything. Then he creates man. And we know it's his crowning creation because, well, let's just read it. He said, let us make man. So he's, God speaks to himself as, uh, or refers to himself in the plural. Let us make man in our image. And we talked a lot about that in previous segments. So I encourage you to look back on that if you've not, uh, if you missed some of that. According to our likeness, so t two pivotal words, you've got to understand likeness and image. So man is made in the image of God. Now it never says that about any other creation. Nothing else is created in the image. So the copy, the likeness, the representation of God. And it says, let them have dominion. See the purpose here, create the purpose of this creation of mankind, humankind. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female created he them. Then God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, birds of the air, over every creepy, everything that moves on the earth. Now, what we said, and it bears repetition, in these verses are some key things that have not been emphasized, I believe, by much of the human, human family. And 
and even the church has really not communicated this, not understood this the way we needed to. Why we, do we know that? Because if we saw this and read it and understood it the way we should have, women would not have gone through the generations, I mean the millennia, of um, degradation, of suppression, of oppression, of dehumanization that she's experienced. And so we said this, from these two verses, we see this. We see the creation of man. Now, I told you before, when it mentions the first time we see the word man, it is not referring to gender. It says male or female. That's not what it's referring to. It's referring to the race of man. Notice I didn't say races because there's no such thing in God's mind as races on this planet. There's only one race that is the human race, the human family. So when it's talking about here the creation of man, we could say mankind, humankind, the species of man. You got that? Got to really, really make sure we get that clear. It's almost like saying when Henry Ford created the motor vehicle. Of course, his vision, which is very limited, it was everyone was supposed to drive that one model of vehicle. <laughs> That's why he got other competition fast, because feel like everyone didn't want to drive a black Ford Model T. They wanted to have some variety of colors and variety of models. <laughs> and so we could say under the classification of cars, there are, very, there are many types of cars, but the fact is that for the most part, they do the same thing. Now... God said, let us make man, again, humankind, the human species, uh, um, human beings in his image and in his likeness. Then he says, we said this, I'm just real fast, he made them in two models. What are the two models? Male and female. That's where we get gender. And then we find out what did um, Adam, when woman was made, taken out of man, think about this now, says she shall be called woman or a man with a womb. Now he didn't, so that means he recognized that she was just like him. The only difference physically was she had a womb. Now thank God she had a womb because there would be, that means she would be the one who would, pro, well, through, through which procreation or the duplication or the reproduction of the species of man would come through. And interesting, he also named in Genesis 3, I believe, he said he called her Eve, meaning the mother of all living. So this is really, really important. So now, in talking about woman, know your worth. Uh, speaking to you ladies, you've got to know your worth. And I believe men, you need to hear this message. So what I'm sharing is not just for women. It's got to be, it's got to, I really believe we need to understand it even more than women. Women have to know this because remember, any time, if any people have been an oppressor, it's the oppressors that must make the changes. Likewise, women, you've got to renew your mind through the scriptures to see yourself correctly. Now, so now when we look at this, um, let me make a statement that I want you to think about. Women, you are not to be, you shouldn't be looking for a man to give you your value and worth. And that's a mistake a lot of women make. So now, let me say it again. You are not to look, or you're not supposed to be looking for a man to give you your value and worth. Your question is then why? Carl, why are you saying that? Pastor Carl, why are you saying that? Because whoever determines your worth, think about this now. Whoever determines your worth will determine how you are to be treated. So now what I want you to be thinking about today and over, this, over the next few days, consider what is your worth. Woman, what is your worth? Woman, know your worth. What's your worth? You better know that. So now, whoever determines your worth or what you believe your worth is will legitimize how you're to be treated. So that's why we're going to talk about this when I was ending up last week's session. That question came into my mind. That's why I wanted to 
pursue this uh, this week. So again, you're not to be looking to a man to give you value and worth. Um, let me go on a little bit, some points I put here. If you think about it, um, because you're going to, when you hear that statement, the relationship of a man and a woman or husband and wife is necessary because God created it, made it so. God, our creator, said it is important. And it's important in the matter and in the purpose of dominion. It's important in the matter of procreation. And also it's important in marriage or in the family because two is better than one. But as I was saying something maybe two weeks ago, don't mistake function for worth and value. Got to be very careful. So oftentimes in our, in our societal thinking, because women were the ones through whom children come, because women were created after men, because um, women's bodies are different than men, then in our minds, what we've done over the generations, what men did, they classified them as an inferior being. Now keep in mind now, anytime someone is made, you make them inferior to you, you can legitimize your treatment of them. But you need to understand through scripture, God has made men and women on the same level. He never created them inferior. Women were never created inferior to men. Now, listen to this. A man doesn't give you worth and value. You better get this. He is to affirm your value and worth. So a lot of the problems we have today is this is if men don't know the value and the worth of women, then they're attaching their value and worth and treating them according to how they see them. We talked a bit about that last week. So if you see a woman as inferior, how are you going to treat her? Less than yourself. If a man sees his wife as inferior, well, you're just a woman. You know, you're just there to give me children. Then she's less than. So what does that do? It legitimizes your treatment of her as an inferior to yourself. That's why I'm always going back again to Genesis 1. He says he created the species of man in his own image. When he uses the word man, first, it is not gender. He says male and female created he them. Who's them? The species of mankind, humankind, human beings. So again, get it out of your mind that women are inferior. Now, we got it. So, you know, notice my time goes by real quick when I'm here. I want to show you a scripture here. Gen Ephesians chapter 5. I was thinking about this and Lord, how do I prove this further? How do we get this into the hearts of people to think right? We've got to think right about one another. We have to think right. Now think about it. Now I want you to, I'm going to look at one, a couple of verses, two verses. Ephesians 5, verse 28. So men and women have to see one another right. And we have to, since God is the one who created us, he's the one who has determined our value and worth. So keep that in mind. So now if we don't know how God sees us, we're going to put a less than valuable or worth to ourselves as well as to women. But here's an interesting verse I want you to look at. Ephesians 5 verse 28, it says this. So husbands ought to, is about, is wrapping up his statements here about the husband-wife relationship. Husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. What? Look at this. It's an amazing statement. He who loves his wife loves himself. 
Now look at the language there. Husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. Now, this is an absolutely amazing statement. I'm going to read something even more shocking a bit later on. So it tells us now, this verse, I wrote it down. It proves equality, compatibility, unity, and oneness. So he says now, husbands, love your wife as your own body. So isn't he saying then, and he says, he who loves his wife loves himself. Let me ask you a question then. If he says love his wife as himself, doesn't that mean that his wife is equal to him? Just think about that. As himself. And in other words, it says now, no one, I didn't plan to read this, listen, no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it. So he sees then now, if you don't love your wife, you don't treat her a certain way, you're hurting yourself. I don't know how you hear that. But you've got to understand, God is saying, he knew we would have a problem with this, obviously. So he's trying to renew our minds so that we see our wives correctly, the way we need to see them if we're going to make this union work the way he intended. And he says, well, you've got to love her as yourself. And if you do it, you're showing that you love yourself. That's an amazing statement. So now here's a few of the thoughts. Again, love his wife as himself, as himself. Now look at verse 33. I'm going to read this from the Amplified because it's um, quite interesting the way it says it. Uh, Ephesians 5.33. However, each man among you without exception is to love his wife as his very own self with behavior worthy of respect and esteem. Look at that. Always seeking the best for her with an attitude of loving kindness. Look at that. Again, I see so much of the creation of woman in, in uh, Genesis 2 in this, because God said this, when he saw the animal life, everything he created, created man, he says, there was no one compatible with him. Then he creates him out of Adam. Now, this is interesting, because people say, well, she's in fear because she came out of man. Well, the thing is this, God wanted to show that he, she came out of the same substance as himself the exact same substance she had the same spirit in her spirit of God as Adam did I've had the same physical substance as he did and God said there was no one compatible the word means suitable see that on the same level not equal with him so so that means Adam couldn't mate with a lion, a bear, a crocodile. They weren't in the same class. A woman is in the same class as man, the same as males, as male men, the same class that is undisputable. So we've got to get that cleared up. And this scripture here, okay, I'm going back to Ephesians 5.33. However, each man among you, without exception, is to love his wife as his own self. What is Paul doing in here? He's trying to change their vision of themselves and how they see their wives. They've got to see them right if they're going to treat them right. So, uh, um, is to love his wife as his very own self. Isn't that interesting? He's got to see her the way he sees himself. Oh, you got to see that. You got that? So he's saying, you've got to treat her, love her as his very own self. So see her as he sees himself. Well, how are men supposed to see themselves? Creating the image of God in the God kind, in the class of God. 
America to see themselves worthy of dignity, respect, honor, love, res you know, reverence. All of those esteem, goodness, kindness. So you've got to see, so you've got, you see yourself that way. And if you see yourself that way, you're supposed to see your wife in the very same light. And not to be treated any less than the way you would wish to be treated. And I tell you, that just clears a whole lot of stuff up right there. So I wrote a question, how does a man see himself? So the lo this love is based on how he sees himself. Listen, we love according to how we see ourselves and how we see one another. We do it every day. You will love yourself the way you will. We love according to how we see ourselves and how we see one another. Paul right here was hitting at this thing. Man, husbands, love your own wife. So every woman doesn't get the same treatment as your wife because your wife is, is, so is a part of you and you see yourself as, treat, as deserving the highest dignity, the highest respect, she's to get no less. You see that? But it all starts with understanding that she's created in the likeness and the image of God just like you. Well, I tell you, that just blesses me to no end, I tell you. So again, mate, so um, back to Genesis one and two, I'm closing with this, listen. Some women and men made in the image and likeness of God, made of the same substance as himself, the same species. So my wife and I are united as one and we're supposed to see one another as one. I should never, think about this, so there should never be the thought of criticizing her, of cursing at her, of raising my hand to hurt her. Why? I see her as myself. To deride her, to demean her, to abuse her. In Paul's thinking is to abuse myself in the marriage union, if you will. And so that's why now women know your worth. Think about this now. You must see yourself, even as a single woman, even before you get married, you must see yourself as creating the image of God, no less than a man, no less. Again, you're a man or mankind, a species of man with a womb. You are worthy of dignity, worthy of respect, worthy of reverence, worthy of love, worthy of esteem. You should be treated right. It's not an exception for you to be treated right. The, abnorm the, the abnormal, abnormality is not being respected. So that's the different, you know, that's something that's, that's an aberration. The normal thing you should be expecting is to be treated with respect and dignity, not to be talked down upon. You see what I'm saying? This is really important that you've got to get this in your heart. Now, why I said, woman, know your worth. If you don't know your worth, think about it. If you don't know who you are, then basically you leave yourself for other people to label you and to place on you their value and worth. Or put it this way. If you don't know your worth, then you're just open for other people to make you what they think you should be. So when you know who you are now, when you know, listen, I'm creating the image of God. I'm no less than a man. In any way, I am no less. I'm intelligent. I have the capacity to create, to think. I've got the, I've, I've got, of course, I'm a, I'm a woman also, and I have the ability to reproduce. But even all of that is done with a sense of responsibility. You're not created to be used by a man. <laughs> you got to say, no, there's, you've got a value, you've got worth, you've got to know this. You've got to have it inside of you. I'm thinking about a scripture in Proverbs, and I'm going to close with this. Proverbs 31, as it comes to my heart right now, it gives an amazing picture to me of a woman who knows who she is. And I, I don't know how much time I've got, but I'm going to, I'm going to close with this one. Proverbs 31, real quick, Proverbs 31, verse 10. It says, who can find a virtuous 
woman. This is a woman of value, a woman of worth. Her worth, oh, look at this now, is far above rubies. Rubies are precious stones, right? Watch this. The heart of her husband safely trusts her. She's, got, she's valuable. Listen, she will have no lack of gain. She does him good, not evil, all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and willingly works with her hands. She's like the merchant ship. She brings her food from afar. She rises also while it is yet night and provides food for her household, a portion for her maidens. She has servants who respond to her. Listen, she considers a field and buys it. She's industrious. She's a landowner, a land purchaser. She girds herself with strength and strengthens her arms. She perceives that her merchandise is good. Oh, look at that. She, I'm telling you, she's, she's an owner of business. Her lamp doesn't go out by night. She stretches out her hands to the distaff, and her hand holds the spindle. She extends her hands to the poor. Look at that. This is a, a woman of means. So she, she's not only a blessing to her family, but she's a blessing to the community. She reaches out her hands to the needy. She's not afraid of snow for her household. All of her household are clothed with scarlet. I'm telling you, this is a multifaceted woman. She makes tapestry for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Oh, look at how she dresses. See that? Her dressing is a, is a representation of what she thinks of herself. She doesn't dress poorly. She dresses because on the inside of her, she has a, she has an, she has a mindset of worth and value that marks her. She knows who she is. This woman knows who she is. She's a woman. Listen, it's at the beginning of this, it says her worth is far above rubies. She knows her value. Many of you have been subject to abuse because you never knew your worth. You were waiting on a man to, tell, to show you his, your worth. You better know your worth. Men are only supposed to affirm your worth. Listen, listen. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes fine linen garment, linen garments and sells them and supply, supplies sashes to the merchants. Strength and honor are her clothing. This is all part of her worth, by the way. Strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in time to come. Listen, she opens her mouth with wisdom. This is a woman of wisdom. Her words are carefully chosen. She doesn't just lash out. Now, this is a controlled woman. She's got wisdom. Her life is making an impact both on the family, on her husband, and in the community. Strength and honor are clothing. She shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom. In her tongue is the law of kindness. She watches over the ways of her household. Look at that. Look at that. This woman, I'm telling you, she's not a selfish woman. She's unselfish. She's, she could say there's that spiritual awareness and presence. She watches over her household. Why well, I could go there. Does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. See the stewardship of her children. She's helped to shape her children and mold them. They call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Oh, listen. He praises her. Doesn't condemn her. See that? Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful. Beauty is passing. But a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. So that woman, know your worth. There's some verses, verses here, some words here that will help you to cultivate your worth. One of the big ones is this, a woman who fears the Lord. In her relationship with God, a reverence, a respect, a cultivation of her relationship with her Lord, she understands her value and worth. And look at the impact she is on her family, on her husband, on her children, on the community. Man, this is the kind of woman God has called you to be, a woman of value a woman of worth. And I'm going to pray for you today that you will rise up and be that woman. And men, be, you know, be the encourager. Be, those, be the kind of man that let's, let's be men who praise our wives, that affirm them, that bless them, that help them to be everything that God has called them to be. 
that we will be encouragers of their full potential. So, Father, I thank you for every person who has heard this message today. And I thank you that the word of God that they've heard today, it's gone on the inside of them. I thank you for the anointing, the presence of the Holy Spirit that comes upon the people as they hear this message today. And they rise up. I say the women who hear this, they rise up, they fear you, they reverence you, they respect you, Father, and they recognize their worth. And they walk according to this value and worth. I pray even those that have been caught up in even a lifestyle of abuse, that they rise up even now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, I thank you. I pray even now that you'll set different ones free. Set them free, not just from abuse, but set them free from the mindset of abuse. And that they'll rise up and experience the glorious liberty of the sons of God. Father, I pray for husbands. I pray for men even now that you will cause them to make, cause a, such a change in their hearts, a change in their lives, that they will praise their wives. They will encourage their wives. They will lift up their wives. They will be an example to their wives. They will affirm their wives in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Well, I want to thank you again for joining me. Please check out our, our uh, website, foundationforlife.ca. Lots of excellent resources that will help you in your walk with the Lord and grow in the knowledge of God. Um, also, please like and follow us on Facebook, Foundation for Life Church. And also partner with us at Foundation for Life, at info at foundationforlife.ca. Any amount will help us to continue to preach the word of God around the world. So until next time, thank you so much for joining us. And until next time, God's richest and best be yours. We love you. Thank you for joining us today on Healing for the Nations with Pastor Carl Lewis. If this broadcast has been a blessing to you, we encourage you to partner with us financially to continue the teaching of God's Word. To give, please write to Foundation for Life Christian Ministries or securely online at foundationforlife.ca. Healing for the Nations is a ministry of Foundation for Life Christian Ministries. Visit foundationforlife.ca and avail yourself of our valuable life-building resources for free. Join us next time on Healing for the Nations.